Meru, a wilderness less visited, and that's the Meru National Park. This park teems with a variety of wildlife species. The also harbors a rich history and is famous as the setting for Joy Adamon's book that is dubbed Born Free and also played as a hideout for Meru revolutionary leader that is Musa Moriamu. And of course, during the colonial war, our reporter Elizabeth Atieno visited the Meru National Park pack and has filed this report. The gates of Meru National Park welcome you to the true definition of an area so remote yet surrounded by undiluted natural beauty. Situated about 350 kilometers from Kenya's capital Nairobi and 71 kilometers from Meru town, to get here, you have to bear with the long hours on the road, but the rewards are immense. After all, they say where the road ends, the real adventure begins. Dear viewer, the gates of Meru National Park is a chunk of real escapade. A swarm air and thick dust emanating from the rich volcanic soils deposit rise from this land. You will spot each and every variety that constitutes Kenya's wildlife system. From lions, giraffes, elephants, buffaloes, rhinos and over 410 bird species all battling for survival. This park boasts of unrivaled biodiversity, to say the least. The park also uh, boasts of having the special five. Among the special five is the reticulated giraffe, which is endangered species. We also have the gravy zebra, which is also endangered. We have the Somali ostrich. We also have the Bisa oryx and the Jerenuk. The park, which covers an area of 870 square kilometers, borders Isiolo County to the north, Tana River County to the east, Garissa County to the northeast, Tarakanithi County to the south. It equally borders Kora National Park, which is twice bigger than Meru National Park and is covered with a dense bush, acacia woodland, and verdant tall grasslands. Meru Conservation Area is about 4,000 square kilometers. And this conservation area is the second largest conservation space after Savo Conservation Area. Straddling the equator, the park is intersected by 13 rivers. The rivers and mountain-fed streams pass insurmountable barriers as they snake through the Meru National Park, giving birth to its green paradise, a vital feature now that the world is grappling with the effects of climate change. Hippopotamus gather to get full advantage of this breathtaking river. The tens of hippopotamus share a single spot along the river as they balletically aim to get upstream. Because if we have some of the uh, riv rivulets drying up, the hippos will start moving upstream. The elephants will move upstream. When all these animals are moving upstream, the carnivores also move upstream and by any chance they'll be found outside the, the park and this causes uh, human wildlife conflict. Actually climate change uh, has a correlation with human wildlife conflict. The wild animals are not the only ones making this pilgrimage. This is more of a showcase than a pristine national park. Here there exists an array of activities that visitors can indulge including game viewing, camping, picnicking, hiking and even swimming. All made possible by tourist attraction sites like the Elsa Coach and Rhino River Camp nestled within the park. Sakopi is, uh, has a capacity of 25 parks and uh, besides those we have two other facilities immediately outside the park that is Equator Safari Camp which has a capacity of 10 and Rhino River Camp which has a capacity of 18. They say a people without a past is like a nation without a soul. The historic memories of the indigenous people might have been destroyed, but this baobab tree situated in this park harbors what is not to be forgotten, and it traces back to 1950s.
This tree was the hideout of famous Meru revolutionary leader Musa Mwariyama as he hid from the colonialists. Mwariyama was the only Mau Mau from the Meru side who survived the war without being killed. He was the founding member of the Kenyan African Union and led his troops to victory in 1952 against the British troops at the battle for Ole Nguruone. A Baobab hideout, where it is believed during the Anvil Operation onslaught, Musa Mwariyama uh, did not uh, succumb to the colonial war, uh, but he only lost his life in 1989 from a, a snake bite. Still in the 50s, in 1956 to be specific, a lioness dubbed Asa was born and was bred by a couple, Joy and George Adamson. The two met in Kenya and got married in 1944. Joy had deep interest in the natural world, whereas George was a game warden for the northern district of Kenya. In 1956, George embarked on a mission into the wilderness. Unfortunately, a lioness charged him out of the bush, and in defense, he shot and killed her, only to find out that he was protecting three cubs. George then brought home the three lion cubs. However, raising the three cubs proved to be difficult, and after six months, two of the cubs were sent to a European zoo. The smallest cub, Elsa, remained with Joy and George. Elsa, the lioness, was trained and then released back into the wild. Joy assimilated her knowledge and wrote a book about Elsa, dubbed Born Free, which was published in 1960, a book that brought unmatched fame to the Meru National Park. In 1961, Elsa succumbed to a tick-borne disease, but her memories live on in this park. This is the Elsa's grave, one of the many prehistoric sites we have right here in the vast Meru National Park, which boasts of not only historical and cultural heritage, but also a remarkable wildlife ecosystem. Meru National Park was founded in 1966 and was run by one of Kenya's most energetic wardens, Peter Jenkins. However, in the 1980s, the park fell into neglect and for more than a decade into the late 1990s, the entrancing wilderness was virtually off limits due to poaching. Between the 70s and 80s, we had uh, all, nearly all our black rhinos wiped out within the park. Uh, insecurity was so high, we lost uh, a lot of revenue because visitors would not come to the park. But until 1989, when Kenya Wildlife Service was established and uh, some of the restoration programs were introduced. The situation has improved over time and now the park is secure. The elephant population had reduced from 3,500 to only merely 200. This is uh, just through poaching. And with improved security, uh, with a lot of support from the government, we've been able to restore the population. As of 2021, we recorded 986 elephants within the Meru Conservation Area. Still, human wildlife conflict is still a menace, with communities bordering the park decrying losses and destruction caused by elephants. Mara nyingi hata kuna wakati tulifunga barabara ya hapo Njoro Iboro usiku tukakaa hapo mpaka saa sita ya usiku na asubu yake tukasema tutaandamana juu ya huyo ndofu last year lakini ngimwande na asubu yake alikuja akatuambia kwanza hiyo hiyo rora itawekwa soonest possible kwa mfano unakuta ya kwamba wanyama huwa wanapotea wanatoka kwa eh, mari makao yao wakati sana sana wa kiangazi according to the Meru National Park Kenya Wildlife Service team, a durable solution lies on a clever compromise that will make both wild animals and the local community happy and satisfied. And basically, uh, we maybe we might tell the community, we might sit with the county government and tell the community the best way is to leave the, the corridors open for the animals and to see if they can try alternative uh, livelihood activities. It can do beehive farming, it can do chili farming, but not food crops. 
The story of Meru National Park depicts an unbearable attractiveness of being. It is indeed a park with a rich wildlife ecosystem and a checkered history. Unfortunately, this park is less visited and a clarion call has been made to tourists, both local and international, to visit it and embrace the beauty that lies beneath. Elizabeth Atieno, TV 47 from the Meru National Park. Beautiful.